All right, how you doing? This is Kevin McCain, and today we're going to talk a little bit about some oil painting. Uh, and most specifically, we're going to talk about um, tinting strength and some of the nature and property of oil paint that you're going to want to know about. So I've got here titanium white, and I've got here uh, this is ivory black. We've got a cad yellow light there and there. We have a Namthal red, which I believe in this case is a Grumbacher red. Namthal has like 20 different names. Uh, so, and then we've got a uh, cobalt blue. Now these are gonna, these are just some general uh, pigments. We're gonna talk again about some general terms, but they're very important when you're getting, when you're first starting to paint in oil. So the first thing is a tinting strength. Now tinting strength is how much or how strong that color is. So if these, if this black and this white had the same tinting strength, I should be able to mix both of them together. So let's put about a, like a, a dried peas worth size or some, or just, you know, a lentil or something like that. And I, it looks like I got some of that white, that, that, that tinting strength of this red I think I said white, but what I meant was red. The tinting strength of this red is really powerful. You gotta be really careful of that one. Um, and again, every, 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 and I'm gonna put another, the same amount out here of black. But every paint is different. Every paint has a different tinting strength. And so we're gonna talk about how do we deal with that? So if these have the same tinting strength, the white and the black, I should be able to mix them together and get a, a, a value that's right between the two of them. I don't. I actually get a gray that's closer to the black than it is to the white. So it's not, these don't have the same tinting strength. If I went ahead and grabbed this white and put out another sort of dried pea or, or lentil, that's a little bit more actually, let me take that out, a uh, dried lentil size, that's about right. Uh, amount of white then we can mix these together. So now what we have is two parts white to one part black And we're closer to being in the middle, but we're still closer to black than we are to white It's not it's not a neutral gray just yet uh, It's close But it's not quite and if I wanted to I could pull out a little 10-step value scale. Let's actually put this in the camera so you can see it going from white to black And again, we would need to be somewhere about here and this one, you know, is, is somewhere between these two so Let's go ahead and whoops. I put a bunch of black in there that time That's not good. So we're gonna take try to take that out dig that out of that white uh, There we go because you don't want your white getting all, you know, full of color because then you'll, you'll never get a clean mixture. So we'll take one more uh, lentil sized piece of white or a little pile of white that's about that much. And looks like the other ones were a little bigger so I'll put a little more out there. We're not doing tablespoons or teaspoons or anything quite that, you know, but we're, we're in general trying to get the same amount each time. So now I'm three parts white to one part black, which means the black is three times as strong as the white. And we could take this, and again, this is my 10 step value scale. And we're supposed to be somewhere there, and we're not quite there yet, it's still too dark. So, we're gonna end up with I think we're already at three. So this will be four times as much white as there is black. All right. And here's the thing to understand that, the important thing, so now we're about, we're about at the midpoint between white and black. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, it's pretty dang close. We may not still be there, so we take this, and this is, you know, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, you know, somewhere right about, you know, here. And we're about there, so I think we're good. I don't know if you can see that, but I said we're about, you know, we're about in the middle of scale. So it took five, no, pardon me, four times as much white as black to get to this, to this, um, to this value. Now, here's the thing. If I want to actually go one step on this value scale, if I wanted to go just one step lighter or darker, if it took me four parts white to one part black to get to here, to go the next step up, it would, it would, it wouldn't take, it would, it would take anywhere from eight to 12 parts white to one part black. So if I went ahead and you know, grab a paper towel, clean this up a little bit. So again, if I wanted to go <laughs> moving stuff around now, let's try to straighten this back out. All right. I'm just doing this on a piece of uh, melamine tempered, uh, tempered melamine mounted on a masonite. It's kind of like a laminate countertop and it's white, so it shows this off really well. But if I was trying to get to the next step, instead of just having, I just put a tiny bit of black there. So instead of having about five times as much, or four, pardon me, four times, I keep gravitating towards five because it's, it's an easier number. Instead of having this much white to that much black, I think there's more than four parts. I think I've, I've got considerably more white than black. So, I think that's a little closer. But to get the next step, it's not just, it's not gonna be just twice as much, so it's not gonna be just this, but it's usually also gonna be a little bit more. So, we could go ahead and, and mix this together. And lo and behold, again, we're just about one step lighter and we had more than twice as much white and so we're probably somewhere about 10 parts 10 parts white to one part black to go the next step lighter is going to be anywhere from 20 to 24 parts white to one part black so it, it doubles every time and if we wanted to go another step lighter it would be you know 48 to 50 to 60 parts white depending on so to get a, to a value that's right up here that's just dark just darker than white or somewhere between these two I would need to be somewhere around 200 parts 200 parts white to one part black to get it light enough okay and so that's an important thing to understand is that it doesn't take very much when you start getting up towards the lighter range it takes very little black and every time again we, we went from here from four parts to 10 parts to about, you know, 24 parts to, actually this is even more than 24 parts because I just kind of scraped a little black on there. So this actually probably has something around 40 times or whatever as much black to white. And if I wanted to, to get a dark gray that's just lighter than black, again, I'm probably gonna have to have, now this is four times as strong, so, I may only need like 50 part, 50 times as much black as there is white because it starts out stronger, but the idea is still very, very important that it, to keep a dark gray, if I have too much white, it's going to go too light. It will not be dark enough. So this right here, It's gonna be a dark gray. This is no longer black. It's actually a very, 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 very dark gray. And to see that, we could actually take some black. Whoops. There we go. We could actually take some black and float it in the middle there. You can see that if hopefully the camera renders this if it's good enough. But it's it's a it's not black anymore. It's just a step lighter. So again, every time we go darker. So again, if this was uh, four parts white to one part black, the next one down would be like one and a half parts white to one part black.
it's gonna get less and less and less. And that's, that's what makes uh, your different, when you have all these different pigments that have all different tinting strengths, like this red is 20 times as strong as anything on here. And there are certain things, there are certain pigments that are twice as strong as this. And so, because of that, because people don't realize how much it takes, usually beginning artists are gonna kind of mix a one-to-one. -one. Like if I was mixing a one-to-one, -one, I'll take, you know, about half, and that's a, about half a pea's worth of, of yellow and half a pea's worth of red. That's not quite half a pea's worth, right, like right there. This is so red, it's gonna gobble up that yellow and it's gonna barely move. We're looking for the color between these two colors, which is gonna be orange. And even though this has got a little bit more yellow to it now, it's nowhere near orange. To get to orange, we'd have to really take just a little scraping of this and add it to a ton of yellow. Because this right here between the two, oh, we want a little bit more. There we go. This is the midpoint, not this. This is a red orange. And if I was trying to do a yellow orange, I need I would need tons uh, tons more yellow still. And the same thing here with the blue. If I have, if these are now if these are the exact tinting strength, the same tinting strength. If I used a one to one, it will be a green that's equally between the yellow and the blue. So that's about an equal part. Well, this is unusual. So this is a cobalt blue, and uh, in cobalt blues, because blues are usually normally uh, much stronger than yellows, um, and obviously I don't have this. Uh, I don't have this memorized. Oh, what's the tending strength, the strength of this off the top of my head? I just I don't I don't I don't have that memorized. But you're gonna want to start. You have to start to get a feel for it. So if I like, oh, that's that's yellow green. What I want is a blue green. I better have a ton more blue and just a scotch of yellow to keep this as a green, but on the on the bluer side. It, you know, and you can see this is definitely blue and this is definitely yellow green and the actual neutral green or, or the medium green is that or grass green or true green, whatever you want to call it, is right between these two guys, somewhere about about there that's the midpoint so these guys are actually a one-to-one -one. in other words of the same same tinting strength what happens is that again with most of these mixtures students are usually doing kind of close to a one-to-one -one, a two-to-one three-to-one and when you have something that's this strong it's going to be about the same color it's not going to vary that much and it's the same thing with black to white if people are doing, working in the black and white which is what we have people start with because value is the most important part of color, they again they end up with paintings that are mostly the middle range values, and not the the extreme range, the extreme darks and the extreme and the extreme lights. And the oranges seem to be about the same orange, and the greens seem to be about the same green, and the purples about the same purple. There you don't get the extreme blues uh, purples and the extreme red purples and the extreme red uh, oranges and, and yellow oranges and blue greens and yellow greens. So a way, the best way to to not to to deal with this, and it'll save you all kinds of heartache and such, is to use a mixing strategy. And normally, again, normally I would, I would, you, you have some generalities that we're going to use, and that is that yellows are the weakest, reds are the second, uh, the, the, so the, the yellows are the weakest, and then it goes the reds, and the blues are usually the strongest, depending on the blues. Now, there's all kinds of yellows and all kinds of reds that could flip this general rule on its head, that yellows are the weakest and reds are the, are, are the second weakest, and that blues are the strongest. But obviously this one's not. And again, if I'm painting with 30 different colors on my palette, which I sometimes do, how are you going to deal with that? Well, let me show you. If I'm going to work in a sky, I'm mostly light values, right? So if I'm working in, a, in the sky, I'm going to start off my mixture by starting a puddle. It looks like i got some green and some yellow in there. I don't know how that happened. But anyways, I'm going to start with my white right there. 
And then I'm gonna add just minute amounts, amounts of black. Like there's so little black on there. It's barely a scraping, but even that might be too much. I'm gonna take some of that off. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna put it in there. Well, all right, well, it didn't change much. So that's great. So I can put some more black in there. Even pick a little bit more of this up. Now this is already just that little scraping of black. I mean, literally it was just a, a, a little, you know, a, a, a haze across my knife. I'm already at a, a step uh, a step nine on the value scale. White white is ten. The next step down is is nine, and oh, I'm not quite there. But I'm, you know, again, I'm, I'm no longer I'm between nine and ten, but I've got a light 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 gray. And if I want to darken it, I'm just going to be very very cautious about how much black I add in there, and I can darken this down as much as I like. If I need more black, I can mark darken it down. If I need more black, I can darken it down. I'm going to have more control by starting off with the value that I want to be a light value and then darken it as I need. And it's the same thing if I was going to be in a, a very, very dark value. I would start a mixing puddle with black. Now I'm going to wipe some of this away so we can deal with this. But I, can, I would start with black Put that over here start that mixing puddle so this would be oh it's going to be mostly black so let's get some black down here let's quit messing around and then if i want to lighten that i'm going to start off with just small small the smallest bits of white uh the black's a little stronger so i can put a little bit more in there but again i can add it as needed but i'm going to add small parts so that way I can stop, you know, when I need when I need to. It's easier to lighten a color than it is to darken a color in general. So again, I could say, well, if that's if that's light enough, great. But if it's not, well, guess what? I can add a little more white to it. Um, and I could still I could keep doing that now. You know, so let's say this is still a dark a dark value. It's a it's a, it's a really nice dark gray. Uh, kind of close to this one right there. So a nice, nice dark gray. And again, if I, now I may not have enough white to lighten this because it's gonna take, because this is so much stronger. So I could actually start a new puddle with less black and then add the white to it, which since I scraped away about three quarters of the black, there's a lot more white here now because the white to black, black ratio you know has changed and so now I've got a dark middle gray and again and if I if I miss if I miss the mark like if the gray needs to be between here I can just take my two mixing puddles and mix it together right now if this is too light and I need it darker again I can come over here and mix into this right I'm gonna have more control this way and this is why this is what helps with even with your colors if I'm starting if I need to mix a yellow orange I'm gonna start off with yellow Whoops, got, still got some black on there. That's not going to help that mixture. So let's go ahead and scrape this out. Uh, wipe off my knife. Wipe the black out of there a little bit. There's still a smudge in there, but I'm not going to worry a ton about it. But I'm going to start with little tiny scrapings of red. Just barely any red. In fact, what I had on there was probably too much. And then add that to my yellow. Now... Let's say that red was so strong, this went way oranger yellow than I wanted. Here's what I'll do. I'll start a new mixing puddle, put my yellow over here, and then add this to that because this is gonna be, this red has been cut with so much yellow that I can, it's gonna be much easier to mix between the two and get whatever variation I want. So yellower, less yellow, and, and, and more uh, true yellow orange. So that's how we're going to do that. And if I was going to start with, if I was going to do a red orange, I would start with my red, right? Let's just say this was my, well, that's already got yellow in it. So let's take that out of there. But I start with my red, like so. And then I would add my, my, my yellow to that red so that I can control just exactly how red orange I make that red you know now this is let red is so strong that it's gonna gobble up all that yellow there's probably gonna be too much there and so here's what I do I go oh well, I think I got too much red there it's never gonna make it or orange enough because there's too much push that aside 
you know, get some of the red out of here. And now again, now that I'm adding yellow, there's gonna be, again, a, a greater ratio of yellow to red because I scraped out about three quarters of that red, right? And again, so I've got this, and if it went too, uh, too orange, and if it's not red enough anymore, I can bring some of this, put it, uh, take some of this guy that I pulled aside and put it back in here. By doing this, you're gonna have much more control over your colors. And you can imagine that if I was gonna start with a blue-green, I'd start with blue and I'd add get slight bits of yellow to it. If I was gonna do a yellow-green, I'd start with pull out yellow, put it in a puddle and add little bits of blue to it. So always try to start with the hue you're looking for. Like if I'm trying to go, I'm trying to do a red-violet, I would grab my red and then I'd add my blue to it. Uh, if I'm trying to do a yellow-green, I would start with, you know, mostly my yellow. Still got some red in there, don't I? Let's wipe this knife a little better. You always want to, so I'm mixing this with a knife, and, and I only mix with knives to make puddles uh, that I'm going to use to mix with in my, in my painting. Otherwise, if I'm painting, I'm going to have my brush out, and I'd be doing the exact same thing with my brush. But if I wanted to yellow-green, I would start with a puddle of yellow, and then add just little bits of blue to it, right? And that way, I can continue to add the blue as needed, so again, I can control this as it goes greener and greener and greener but it's still a yellow green and if I was gonna do again a blue green I would I would start with the, the blue and add the yellow to it little minute bits of yellow to the blue and if I was starting with a, a red violet I would start with red uh, and then I'd add little bits of blue to that to that to make it more red violet so that's sort of a red violet if I needed more red violet I could add more blue to it you know I've got more control this is still not the purple yet it's still a red violet and if I wanted to do a blue violet, I would start with blue and then add just little bits of, of red to it to make this more of a blue violet. If it needs to be more blue violet, I could add just a little bit more red to it. I'm almost to purple. Now this is so dark, it's hard to see it because purples are usually close to, they're, they're almost as dark as the blacks. And so we'll add a little bit, now that was actually probably too much white. But if we add this white here, we can see how much of the what the color actually is and it's a blue violet versus a red violet so this is how you can control and again if I was using uh, if I was doing a black to gray we'd start with and I was doing light grays start with white add black to it if I'm doing dark gray start with black add, add white to it uh, this is a great way of controlling your color when you're doing paintings and that way you don't have to you don't have to try to memorize um, now there's certain colors you do kind of get to know because they'll over they'll take over your mixtures and so you start to go oh that that particular color I got to watch out for I got I got to respect it um, and you certainly want to do that but like I said there's some like that cobalt blue that it's I, I haven't even thought about it in terms of its tinting strength but there's others I'm very respectful of them because if if you're not they'll take over your mixture so I hope you will remember this while you're painting it'll help you immensely. This has been Kevin McCain. Uh, while you're painting, try to always start with, you know, is it a light value or a dark value? If it's a dark value, start with the darks and add the light. If it's a light value, start with the light, add the dark. If it's a if it's a yellow, yellow orange, start with the yellow, then add the red. If it's a red orange, start with the red and add the yellow. Uh, and it will really help you. Have yourself a great day, happy painting, and get out there and be creative. Bye bye now.